Think getting to number one on Google Maps is just about setting up a profile? Yeah, I thought so too. But after 10 years of optimizing over 500 Google business profiles, I've run into more roadblocks than I ever imagined. And if I could go back and tell myself what actually works, here are the lessons I teach myself. Lesson number one. When I first started out, no one knew who I was and I had zero credentials, so lending clients was tough. But eventually, I got my very first one. I poured everything I had into it, worked hard, optimized his Google business profile to the best of my ability and was thrilled with the results we were seeing. Then one day, I got a call from him. He didn't sound very happy. Turns out his profile had been suspended, completely out of the blue. I was shocked. I genuinely thought I had done everything right. Overnight, all his rankings vanished. And after digging into it, I realized I'd overlooked some of Google's basic guidelines. Thankfully, I figured out the issue pretty quickly, fixed it, and eventually managed to get the suspension lifted. So lesson number one, always stick to Google's guideline. If you don't, you risk losing everything you've worked for. Trust me, take the time to double check your profile against their rules on a regular basis. Even small slip-ups can lead to a suspension and put your business at risk. But unfortunately, sometimes even when you do follow all the rules, Google might still suspend your listing. Which brings me to lesson number two. Whenever you appeal a Google business profile suspension, Google will ask for official documentation to prove your business is legitimate and operates at the location you claim. Back when I was just starting out, I didn't fully understand how important this was. I was in a rush to get my client's listing reinstated, so I submitted the appeal without the proper paperwork. No surprise, Google rejected it. That mistake cost us valuable time and money, and the listing stayed suspended far longer than it should have. That's when I learned, if you want a smooth and successful reinstatement, you must provide clear, accurate, and well-organized documentation. Once I got everything in order, I resubmitted, and the profile was reinstated fairly quickly. These days, Google's process has gotten even stricter. You only get one chance to appeal, and you have just 60 minutes to upload the required documents once you start the process. So lesson number two is this, be suspension ready. Even if your profile hasn't been suspended, take the time now to gather all the necessary paperwork like business licenses, utility bills, lease agreements, or anything else that proves your business is legit and operates at its listed location. Stick that in a folder on your computer so it's all ready to go. If the worst happens, you'll be ready to submit your appeal without scrambling, and that could save you weeks or even months of downtime. Lesson number three. I used to spend countless hours obsessing over every tiny detail of every Google business profile I worked on. I'd add keywords to descriptions, geotag photos, and over-optimized Google posts convinced these tweaks would boost my clients' rankings. But nothing really changed. Rankings barely moved, and I was left scratching my head, wondering what I was doing wrong. After tons of research and plenty of trial and error, I finally discovered the truth. Most of those tactics were completely useless. Google doesn't even pay attention to them. Once I stopped wasting time on fluff and focused on what actually matters, things like categories, reviews, business names, nap consistency, and a few other key elements, everything changed. Rankings shot up. So here is lesson number three, optimize what counts. Don't waste your time on things Google doesn't value. Focus on the fundamentals that do move the needle. You'll see better results and you'll get them faster. Lesson number four. I nearly lost a client's trust when their phone number and business hours suddenly changed on their Google business profile and they had no idea how it happened. Turns out, someone else had edited the listing and it definitely wasn't them. That was a wake-up call. I started checking my clients' listings more frequently and reached out to a few local SEO pros to see if they'd run into the same issue. Sure enough, I learned that anyone, including your competitors, can suggest edits to your listing. And if Google thinks those changes look legit, it can publish them without notifying you. That means key info like your phone number, hours, or even your business name can be changed behind your back. And the consequences can be huge. Missed calls, lost leads, confused customers. So lesson number four is protect your listings information. Check your Google business profile regularly. Make sure your hours, contact details, categories, and other vital info are still correct. Unauthorized edits are more common than you think, and catching them early can save you a lot of trouble. If you want peace of mind, there's a great tool provided by WhiteSpark that monitors your listing for changes and alerts you the moment something's been edited. 
You can choose to accept or reject those changes and it only costs a dollar a month. I've dropped a link to it in the description below. Lesson number five. I spent months focusing on getting a client's Google business profile to the top of Google Maps and eventually we made it. But the phone barely rang. I was confused and honestly pretty deflated. That's when it hit me. Rankings alone don't pay the bills. So I shifted my focus. I made their profile more appealing to real people, added high quality photos, listed their products and services, clarified their offers, added FAQs and a short video. Pretty soon, the leads started rolling in. Lesson number five is to not obsess over rankings alone. Getting to the top is great, but it's only part of the story. Make sure your Google business profile is built to convert, not just rank. Focus on what convinces people to click, call or visit, not just what pleases Google's algorithm. Lesson number six. I used to struggle to compete with businesses that were clearly bending the rules, stuffing keywords into their business names, using fake addresses for service areas, or creating multiple listings for the same company. And the worst part, they were getting away with it. I didn't want to risk my clients' listings by doing the same, so I felt like I was stuck playing a losing game. But eventually, I realized there are smart and fully legitimate ways to level the playing field. For example, registering a DBA let us legally include relevant keywords in the business name, which can make a big difference in rankings. Or for service-based businesses, renting a small legitimate office in a target area gave us a verified address, another ranking factor that Google values. Use Google's guidelines to your advantage is lesson number six. You don't have to break the rules to compete. You just need to understand them well enough to work within them strategically. That's how you stay compliant and keep up with those who cut corners. Lesson number seven. I once worked with a client who had a very limited budget. He could only afford to optimize his Google business profile, so that's why I focused all my effort. I made sure everything was perfectly set up. Categories, photos, posts, the works. But despite all that, we couldn't get the results he needed. His competitors were still outranking us even though their listings weren't nearly as polished. I was baffled. Then it hit me. Local SEO success isn't just about having a great Google business profile. You also need a solid website and a consistent presence across other platforms to build real authority and brand recognition. Yet I still see so many businesses relying only on a Google business profile because they're trying to save money by skipping a website or don't spend time promoting it elsewhere. And it holds them back. So lesson number seven is don't rely on your Google business profile alone. A Google business profile is a powerful tool, but it's not the whole strategy. If you want to truly stand out, invest in a quality website and stay active on relevant platforms and social media. That's how you build prominence, trust, and a brand that attracts real customers. Lesson number eight. I had a client once who was getting frustrated that he wasn't ranking fast enough. Even though I told him to be patient, and stick to the plan, he decided to take shortcuts and try some shady SEO tactics. He started buying fake reviews, sketchy backlinks, and even set up fake Google business listings. At first, he was pretty pleased with himself. Things were moving fast, and he thought he'd found a clever workaround, but it didn't last. Google caught on. Not only did they suspend the fake listings, but it, they also took down his real one too. It messed up his business big time. That's when I decided to stop working with him. If someone's willing to ignore advice and go down that road, I don't want to be part of that. So lesson number eight is don't use dodgy tactics. Fake reviews, fake listings, cheap backlinks, they might seem like a quick win, but they will come back to bite you. And when Google cracks down, it's not just the fake stuff that gets hit, your real business can take the fall too. Stick to doing things the right way. It might take longer, but it actually works and it won't blow up in your face later. Lesson number nine. When I first started out, I totally dropped the ball. I forgot to update a client's holiday hours on their Google business profile. The listing said they were open, but they were actually closed. People showed up, found the doors locked and left super annoyed. Some even left bad reviews. Yeah, not my proudest moment. After that screw up, I made it a rule to always update hours ahead of holidays or any schedule changes. The good news, Google's made it way easier now. You can fine tune your hours so Customers know exactly when you're open, closed, or running on special hours. So lesson number nine is as simple as it gets. Keep your info updated. 
Don't forget to update your hours, especially around holidays. It takes like two minutes and save you from a whole lot of headaches and one star reviews you really don't need. Lesson number 10. I've had clients who thought that hiring me meant they could sit back, do nothing, and magically appear at the top of Google Maps. But here is the thing. I know nothing about plumbing, electrical work, or personal injury law. So when it comes to creating industry-specific content that actually resonates with customers, I need their input. Over time, I noticed something. The clients getting the fastest, best results weren't the ones who just paid me and disappeared. They were the ones who stayed involved, sending photos and videos, answering FAQs, replying to reviews, and being active participants in the process. That's when I updated my onboarding. Now I tell every new client up front, if you want to rank higher and faster, I need your help. Lesson number 10 is your SEO agency can't do it all. Don't expect your SEO agency to do everything for you. Your industry knowledge is key. Make it a habit to share content, respond to reviews, and stay engaged with your Google business profile. That's how you get results that actually stick and stand out from the competition. Lesson number 11. Over the past 10 years, as a local SEO professional, I've lost count of how many frustrated business owners have come to me saying the same thing. I paid thousands to an SEO agency or freelancer who promised amazing results and got nothing. Sound familiar? If you run a small business, you probably get flooded with emails every year from so-called SEO experts promising to 10 times your traffic or rankings overnight. Sadly, a lot of business owners fall for it and lose a ton of money in the process. What I started to notice was that the only clients who didn't get scammed were the ones who took a bit of time to learn the basics. They knew enough to spot red flags, like anyone guaranteeing a number one ranking on Google, which no legit SEO professional would ever promise, no matter the budget. So lesson number 11 is know the game so you don't get played. You don't need to be an SEO expert, but understanding the fundamentals can protect you from getting ripped off. If something sounds too good to be true, like guaranteed rankings or instant results, it probably is. A little SEO knowledge goes a long way and it can save you thousands. Lesson number 12. I used to have clients who thought they were crushing it just because their business showed up at the top of Google when they search from their own computer. They assumed that meant their Google business profile was doing great. But the truth is, that's not how it works. They had no real idea how many leads they were getting, what their actual rankings looked like across different areas, or whether their profile was really helping them stand out. Once I showed them how to track real performance, things like lead generation, interactions, and actual keyword rankings, they finally saw the full picture. And more importantly, they knew what to fix to stay ahead of their competitors. So lesson number 12 is understand your performance. Don't rely on a quick Google search to judge how well your Google business profile is doing. Dig into the real metrics, rankings across different locations, calls, website clicks, messages, and direction requests. If you're not paying attention to performance, I guarantee your competitors are. Lesson number 13. I've worked with plenty of business owners who were hesitant to ask their happy clients for things like reviews, testimonials, photos, or to be involved in case studies. Not because they weren't doing great work, they absolutely were, but because they didn't want to bother anyone or come off as pushy. They had the wrong idea about how clients view these requests. The results, their Google business profiles looked bare, missing the kind of social proof that builds trust and drives conversions. But here is the thing, the world's changed. People are used to being asked for reviews now. It's part of doing business. When I finally convinced them to reach out to their happiest clients, they were shocked at how willing people were to help. Clients didn't feel annoyed, they felt appreciated. Most were more than happy to write a review or share their experience. So lesson number 13 is ask your clients for help. Don't underestimate how much your satisfied clients want to support you. They're your biggest fans. Make it a habit to ask for reviews, testimonials, or even participate in case studies. It not only builds trust, but it can seriously boost your visibility and credibility faster than almost anything else. Lesson number 14. No one likes seeing a negative review pop up, especially when it feels totally unfair. I've seen clients panic the moment it happens. They jump in right away, trying to defend themselves 
argue their case or explain why the reviewer is wrong. But here is the truth. That kind of knee-jerk reaction almost always backfires. It pushes potential customers away instead of building trust. I started showing my clients a better way. Respond calmly, professionally, and with a bit of empathy, even if the complaint feels unfair. And it made a big difference, not just in how others saw their business, but also in how they handled tough feedback moving forward. So lesson number 14 is handled feedback like a pro. Negative reviews happen, it's just part of the game, but how you respond makes all the difference. Even if you're not at fault, stay cool, be respectful, and show you care. People do read those replies often more than the good reviews, and how you respond can be what wins or loses their trust. Lesson number 15. Google is always messing around with Google business profiles. New features roll out, old ones get scrapped, and things can change overnight. I make it a point to stay on top of these updates, but I've noticed a lot of business owners don't pay much attention until it's too late. Not long ago, Google pulled the plug on the free website feature that came with your Google business profile. And even though they gave a heads up weeks in advance, tons of people didn't notice. So when their site just disappeared one morning, they freaked out, and my inbox got flooded with panicked messages messages. I couldn't fix the problem instantly, but I did show them how to set up simple alerts on their Gmail account so whenever potential changes could happen, they would find out early enough and not get blindsided next time. So lesson number 15 is stay updated to stay ahead. Even if you're not an SEO expert, it's worth keeping an eye on what Google's doing with its own Google business profile. The sooner you know what's changing, the quicker you can jump on new features or avoid a disaster. Lesson number 16. Before I start working with a new client, I always take a quick look at their Google business profile to see how much work we've got ahead of us, especially the photos and videos section. And over time, I started seeing the same thing over and over again. Free stock photos, generic video, and copy-pasted posts that looked exactly like their competitors. Worse, most of that stuff hadn't been updated months or sometimes even years. The profiles felt flat, boring, and super forgettable. Not exactly the kind of thing that makes people want to pick up the phone and call you. So I started telling clients, if you want to stand out, you've got to show the real you. Swap out the generic stuff for real photos of your team, your work, and your space. Start posting original content that actually reflects who you are and what you do, and do it regularly. And every time they made that shift, the listings started to pop. Customers could actually see what made them different and conversions went way up. So lesson number 16 is show off the real you. Don't just focus on rankings. Make sure your profile actually makes people want to reach out. Use real photos, write your own posts, and keep things fresh. It's the easiest way to build trust and stand out from all the cookie cutter competition. Lesson number 17. When I first got into local SEO, I didn't realize how important it was to focus your Google business profile around one main keyword, the one that really brings in the money. Instead, I tried targeting a bit of everything all at once. And surprise, I wasn't seeing much progress. But after digging into research and running my own tests, I found that dialing in on a single money keyword, then aligning everything around it, like your primary category, business name, photos, reviews, made a massive difference. One of my test listings even hit the number one spot in just 24 hours. That's when it really clicked. So lesson number 17 is to focus on your number one money keyword. If you want faster results, build your Google business profile around the one keyword your ideal customers are searching for. Make sure your categories, posts, and content all support it. That way, Google gets a super clear signal about what your business is all about. And if you're not sure how to do this properly, no worries. I break it all down in this video.